you know when the priest takes out his scarf or whatever it is and starts to take it up for just a second there I seriously thought that he might do you know the Rambo headband thing you know something don't you just love the look on his face when he's in the car and you know they've just stopped after and at least slightly suspenseful, almost tense scene, and just the look on his eyes when he sees the fly, you know, it's just total flies, my old nemesis. Nobody show him the Goldblum movie, okay? He might just freak out completely, run amok in the theater. Why is Lois Lane wearing one leg warmer or halfway sock thing? Why did they put up with the mirror being so messed up? I read that supposedly she looks like really old and worn near the end of the movie. I didn't see it at all. The problem with George slowly going mad is we don't see that much of it, that many signs of it, and sometimes he still sort of has his charm, and then he goes back and forth. I mean, when he's with the friend and the psychic, he's suddenly, you know, pretty clear-headed and looking into what actually sort of happened. Was the whole Indian burial ground thing actually mentioned in this? I'm not entirely sure it was. Why did they not follow up on the Red Room with the well passage to hell thing at all? I mean, if a psychic suddenly said that in somebody else's voice like that, I think I might just either try to cover it up or leave the house. Was there any significance to the priest getting a call right after he transmitted his voice through, I don't know, God waves and, you know, made the psychic say what he was going to be saying to them. Right after that, he gets a phone call and then, you know, like, there's no one online or something. I don't know, did the devil try to call him and tell him, hey, stop that, I'm trying to work here and then, you know, run out of quarters down there or something? Was that Lois trying to call him? Is it just me, or did her brother sort of look like Jimmy Olsen? I I was actually kind of disappointed in the house when it stole fifteen hundred dollars. I mean that I had expected better. I'm I'm I shouldn't have trusted in you, evil-looking house with red eyes. Does that mean that the lamps up there are red. I mean, do they have like a red tint? I mean, isn't that like, you know, here be prostitutes? Isn't it interesting that if you actually see the house from the front and like somebody flicks on and off, flicks off and on the light in one of those windows, it would actually look like the house was winking at you? You know, kinky? I mean, come on, all the perversions are in hell. Anyway, I think the reason it needs to steal these $1,500 is to fund its nasty little habits of messing with plumbing and making the walls bleed. I mean, that must cost a pretty penny. I guess it was supposed to be the well that George fell into there at the end, you know, the passage to hell and all that. And maybe that's why the dog suddenly couldn't recognize him. It was just not very... And then again there at the end, he so suddenly just completely snaps back out of it. Maybe that is what really happened, but it's just not that scary. I wasn't very scared of him before that, and then the moment he snapped back out of it, there was no threat. The house never attacked them. It used, you know, okay, it attacked that one kid's hand and, you know, locked up the babysitter, 
Where did the blood on her hands come from? Did she kill a boyfriend? Is she feeling guilty or something? Anyway. I mean, at most, it sends, like, flies and, you know, makes the priest blind and then catatonic. And I suppose it maybe also makes George impotent, which I know some men regard as the face fate worse than death. But on the whole, nothing happens in 110 minutes of movie. Nothing happens. Maybe they kept it low so that it would make sense that these people didn't leave their new home, but it's just too low. I mean, watch The Shining. Watch The Exorcist. Watch Paranormal Activity. Even Paranormal Activity 2. Maybe especially Paranormal Activity 2. Stuff happens. This one, it's not subtle enough, and it doesn't use the right approach to be just hinting at things. To be effective at, with just hinting at things. And it just doesn't have enough big things happen to be terribly effective or memorable. And there are all the jump scares, which really don't pay off. You know, the cat. You know, when she turns uh, turns around, <gasps> a kid. You know, why did she? Wh why did they sort of say, you know, maybe it was a cat? It, it was a first story window. How would there be a cat out there? Why would it have red eyes? Why was there a demonic pig in this movie? Did somebody working on it have some kind of aversion? I mean, a Muslim or a Jew? I mean, it's fine if you have that religion, but there are scarier things than pigs out there. I swear. The psychic and the partner could just have been written out completely, and, I mean, all you would have been missing was exposition, and the exposition really didn't lead to anything in this, so what was the point? Why did we need to be told, oh, you know, people died here, and, you know, so, so what? It doesn't mean anything, it doesn't lead to anything, there's nothing connecting all these weird events, so why bother you know, giving an explanation, and it suddenly forces Brolin to be sort of normal so he can listen to it, and then, you know, after that we're again supposed to accept that he's, you know, aggressive, and... Also the thing with when he was chopping wood and the partner was giving him bad news, I mean, the way he responded, you know, with, ah, oh, I should have taken care of that. Oh, that should have been, you know... <laughs> that just wasn't that... I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what they were going for there. It just really didn't work. I do kind of like the caterer at the wedding. You know, he's he's got that kind of Joe Pesci or Robert De Niro in a gangster movie kind of thing going on. You know, I don't like checks. You know, I I like cash. You know what happens with checks? Checks get canceled. Checks bounce. I like cash. The deal was cash. You know, every any second now he's gonna break out the baseball bat. You know, and start whining about you know stop mentioning my goddamn shine box. You know. If just someone had actually gotten hurt over the course of this movie, that makes me sound terrible, but come on. Within storytelling, within fiction, there need to be stakes, there need to be characters we care about, there needs to be a coherent storyline. 
just the characters aren't that interesting. They're not all that developed. I didn't know anything about any of the kids in this, basically. I never really felt like anyone was particularly in danger. Yeah. I guess that's about it for this one, so those were my thoughts on the Amityville Horror from 1979. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.